live from Kitchener, Ontario, Canada, and Turner Rivers, Wisconsin, USA. It's the 2023 Please Hold for Dave Sim Christmas Spectacular, featuring the late ah. great Jeff Seiler, Lang Stevens, Michael DeSantis, Rob Schnell, Chris Warner, Aaron Wood, Joe Gabbard, star of multiple Steve Peters Weeks, Steve Peters. John Bow, Mike Sewell, Travis, Michael Grabowski, Mikhail, Michael R. of Easton, Pennsylvania. Special appearances by Margaret Liss, Eddie Gahana, James Bandera Smith, and featuring performances by the Bay City Rollers, Blondie, the Morbid Tabernacle Choir featuring Ace Freely of Kiss, Hall and Oates, Whitney Houston, Rod Torfelson's Armada featuring Herman Menderchunk, Devo, The Electric Mayhem, and Up With People. And now here's your hosts, Manly Matt Dow and Dave Sim. Yay! <laughs> hi, Dave. Hi, hi, Christmas Spectacular Manly Matt Dow. <laughs> I thought of that the other oh, day and went... I, I, I won't have time to do this if Dave calls right away. And then I'm like, looking at the times, I'm like, you know, I might have time to write all this before Dave calls. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. It's it's that strange time of year when uh, when the last prayer is like 6, 12 at night. And, uh, no, you weren't wrong. The sunset prayer is at 446, so... So right around, right around Christmas is when uh, I feel like I'm praying every five minutes. So Paula had a question about that. Since it's a sunset prayer and then a final prayer, what happens to Muslims in Alaska where the sun doesn't set for six months? Uh, I don't think there are any Muslims in Alaska. <laughs> that was my we answer, could... but I said I would ask. <laughs> we could ask them. We can, you could maybe just uh, Google search uh, Muslims Alaska and uh, probably just get a lot of freaked out faces. <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, where are we here? Um, it's the... Uh, uh, it, it, oh, your, your line's first, I guess. Are you going to read your... Uh... I, I didn't actually print it out this month. Okay. It's the first Wednesday of the month. And that means it's time to start rounding up the questions for the next. Please hold for Dave Sim, the December one, which is the last. Oh, no, you don't, Dow. We're not doing that last one crap again. Just get on with it. I forgot that. That was last year where uh, the, you said it was the, the last please hold for Dave Sim and didn't put on the, uh, the 2022 and then... Me being the uh, the scallywag that I am, I played along with that, and uh, you know, yeah, this is the this is the last please hold for Dave Sam, and everybody, and especially Michael R. Michael R. got 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 quite upset about that. So we're yes, we're not going to play around with that anymore. Uh, before we get to the pressing questions that got posted last month, after I sent the facts. Haven't these people suffered enough? No, you had, parenthetically. Uh, it's your turn to remember the late, great Jeff Seiler. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And uh, this one takes an odd turn. Uh, the notes that I wrote down was, uh, you remember that this is all starting to interweave with... Um, uh, Neil Gaiman as the master of dreams, as Joseph, as Yusuf, uh, the 12th surah in the Quran, and also tied in with um, how did this karaoke bar reopen in the middle of COVID-19 uh, since the health authorities everywhere, that was a definite big no-no because that was spraying droplets all over the place. Uh, any place that you were singing and doing it publicly in an enclosed environment, um, you might as well be up on charges of genocide. Um, so uh, it, 
uh, again, I'm not going to be able to wrap this up because now, now it's starting to square all over the place in other directions. Uh, I think the, the, the karaoke DJ was the key to it uh, because um, she was, um, I, I, reading between the lines, I got the sense that she was a very, very attractive young lady and also a very, very good uh, karaoke DJ. And uh, from what I gathered from Siler, um, the Minneapolis uh, environment was, was pretty corrupt uh, to begin with, like uh, from, uh, from the police force on up and from the mayor's office on down. And my best guess would be that uh, uh, somebody who could make that call override or um, to sort of sort short, short circuit uh, the COVID-19 rules in Minneapolis for a specific environment was uh, probably a member of, uh, of this lady's fan club, which I gather was, uh, was pretty extensive. We'll get to that. And uh, in the, uh, next time, it's my turn. Uh, but definitely at the time, even when Jeff was telling me about this, and I was starting to get the idea that uh, a lot of this was centered on the karaoke DJ, whatever her name was. Uh, rule of thumb number one, if you go to her workplace to see her, you aren't her friend and you don't have a relationship with her. You're a customer. And that's, that's a good rule of thumb for a lot of guys who uh, probably spend too much money and too much time in places that they shouldn't be because she works there. And they, it's, you know, if, if you're not going to have a relationship that's an actual relationship, uh, that's, that seems like a really good one, but it's a really bad one. And it particularly um, when it's in a bar, and I speak from experience on that, which uh, brings us to rule of thumb number two, alcohol never improves anything. It only makes things worse. Um, it, uh, it feels like it improves things while you're getting drunk, but uh, it's, it's really just making things worse. The old... Uh, I thought I never cheer up, you know. So you didn't, you didn't cheer up. You got drunk. Um, and number three, a good customer in a bar is an alcoholic, making his alcoholism worse. And nobody is going to call you on it because everybody who works there, in this case, the karaoke DJ, um, the bartenders, uh, the waitresses. Uh, there, as long as as long as you you stay within limits, uh, they're very happy to uh, service your alcoholism, and nobody who's uh, a fellow customer uh, is going to be at all concerned if you're drinking yourself to death. That's that's your lookout. You're you're a grown up. I didn't come here to uh, uh, try and save everybody, save anybody from themselves, and that includes you. Uh, I got that far and then, uh, sudden weird, uh, Neil Gaiman insight, uh, which might be an insight and might be a complete hallucination on my part. Uh, Neil's book, the Nancy boys. Do you remember a Nancy boys? Did you, did you buy that one? I did not buy that one, but I do know that book. Okay. All right. Uh, I didn't buy it and Neil didn't send me a copy, but Neil did send me the manuscript while he was working on it, which was something that he used to do. I don't know if he still does that, uh, or who he does that with, but he had a short list of people that he would send books to and essentially, uh, invite their comments. The publisher would send it to you with, you know, compliments to the author. Um, little card on top of it. And, 
anytime in that situation, it doesn't, doesn't happen now that I've been made to not exist, but anytime that that happened in a situation, uh, I always did the same thing. Uh, read the book, whether it was in manuscript form or printed form. If you see any typos, uh, mark them and fold down the corner and then say, okay, here's, here's the typos that I found, which if you're somebody who has a good eye for typos, which I tend to be, this is, this is something that authors are appreciative of and publishers are appreciative of. Uh, those, those are um, typos that, that we won't have to find ourselves. And thank you sort of thing. But I think there's, uh, at least in the version that I read, there was a karaoke scene. Uh, and I'm going, am I actually remembering that? Or am I imprinting that? because I'm now so immersed in this. So we will leave it as a challenge for the, uh, the please hold uh, viewership. Anybody that's got the Anansi boys or um, wants to search it online, you know, the, uh, the Coles notes things that they've got now where, you know, if you don't want to read the Anansi boys, here's the whole story. Um, you know, episode by episode, and see if there's a karaoke bar sign uh, scene in there. And if there is, uh, can you photocopy it and uh, email fax it to me so that I can read it? Because I seem to remember reading a karaoke scene where I'm going, is this supposed to be me or am I, am I projecting myself onto this? Which would be certainly very interesting the way this whole thing worked out that uh, um, Jeff seems to have uh, mixed himself up real good in uh, in a series of Neil Gaiman enactments. So there's there's my uh, Jeff Seiler story, partial Jeff Seiler story. Uh, you want to talk about a cliffhanger? And there you go. Okay. 